I know some of the things that I mentioned in the video following is going to upset some of my Christian friends. Not one or two, but a lot of them. I just felt some of these things needed to be said. God is love. I'm not hitting on the whole Bible. I'm hitting on specific things that I think every Christian needs to think about when you, when you look inside yourself. I still believe every word the Bible says. I am just pointing out a specific problem that I see in Christianity today. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you stick with it all the way through. While the theme throughout the video is the same all the way through, I am going to hit on certain points throughout the video that differ a little that might deal with you personally or you know someone you know personally so again please listen with an open mind and an open heart thank you for sticking around this long god bless you hi welcome to strengthen your faith i wanted to start this episode out with some scripture 1 john 4 20 to 21 if anyone says i love god and hates his brother he is a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. Very powerful stuff right there. I have another one I wanted to share as well. This one came straight from Jesus himself. Matthew 22, 6 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in all the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law of the prophets. There's a theme here. The theme is all this inner faith bickering, arguing, who's right and who's wrong, the Baptist, the Catholic, the Methodist, the Lutheran. If you love God, you are a brother or sister in Christ. All these other minor details, in my opinion, is straining out the gnat taken in the camel. I know that's not verbatim. But it holds true. There's a lot going on in this world right now. There's a lot of reason that the Christian faith is unpopular with a lot of people out there. And I do believe we would still be unpopular with them. However, we're giving them ammo. We're giving them ammunition by bickering amongst one another. For instance, the Catholic religion seems to be under attack a lot because people say they worship Mary and they worship the Pope. From my understanding from Catholics, they don't worship them, they honor them. But it comes down to the two passages that I just read. Love God before anyone else and if you say you love God but you don't love your neighbor or your brother or your sister then you're a liar are you happy in life are you happy when you tell a fellow Christian they're not doing it right they're not doing it the way you think it should be done obviously we can all read from the Bible and pick and choose certain scripture which we back our faith on or our denomination. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that none should perish. Perish. That's important. That goes a lot for grace. Also, your righteousness is as dirty rags to the Lord. Regardless, I mean, we can't be fighting amongst each other based on which one you want to follow. Why not follow them both? 
You know, I was at a parade about two, three years ago, and I seen a Lutheran church that was in the parade, and they had a pro-gay banner that the whole church was walking behind, and I was really upset by this. How could a church get behind the gay activism or get behind whatever it is, you know, that they were trying to accomplish by, you know, the sign they were holding. But the sign, I believe, said something along the lines, this is going back three years, so please forgive me, of God loving everyone. So I want to know what you think. Do you think that these verses, one coming straight from Jesus himself and one coming from John, don't apply to them? Do you think that these verses don't apply to Catholics? Do you believe, Catholics, do you believe these verses don't apply to Protestants? A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. I believe that was straight from Jesus. Also, in the same chapter of 1 John 4, let's go ahead and start from the beginning. So it doesn't get taken out of context. There are antichrist out there. There are people that you need to test their spirit. But if their spirit testifies to Jesus, they are your brother in Christ. God expects you to treat them as such. Now, is there going to be bickering amongst certain things? Are there going to be one denomination or one set of people who believe they have it right and the other denomination the other denomination doesn't think they have it right absolutely but should this be the core of your faith for condemning people i don't think so now this is just my opinion and i really want to speak on it because i identify most with baptists and one thing i don't like about the baptists is they seem to be the most judgmental amongst other Christians. Now, that's not true for every ba Baptist. I know I'm kind of stereotyping here, but from what I've seen, these other denominations don't seem to be so judging, but they're ready to defend what they believe, especially when attacked. And they have scripture to back up what they believe. Now, there is a difference if you're trying to rebuke your brother out of sin, blatant sin, where that rebuking is supposed to come from a place of love. It's like when you spank your, your child. You don't not love them anymore. You know, or when you get into a fight with your brother or your sister, or a disagreement, not a physical fight, but a disagreement. It doesn't mean you don't love them anymore. You just want to get them on the right path. But I don't think that they were speaking about okay, you're taking this part of the Bible too literally, or you're taking that part of the Bible not literally enough. I think they were speaking more or less, if your brother is stealing, you need to rebuke him. You need to get him on the right path. If your sister is doing anything that's not in God's will, rebuke her bring her back in. But you don't do your rebuking in a way that's going to drive people further away from Christ. Uh, I, I, um, I'm a member of Quora. You know, it's open for everyone. I'm not a leader, anything to be in it. But I like reading some of the answers, and I go into, you know, the faith section. And I was saddened by one post that I saw. Some poor teenage girl said she was an atheist, suffering from depression and to get out of the depression she wanted to turn to God were her motives pure not really according to the article she was hoping it would just be a cure for her depression however if it did cure her depression I'm sure root would have taken and she would have been on very fertile soil and she could have brought forth much fruit herself. However, her Christian friend rebuked her many times along the way. 
mocking her because either she wasn't believing in God the right way or because she was falling away from the faith. According to her, now this is one side of a story, I understand that, but obviously if she was seeking the faith and then fell away from the faith, I got to say that that guy, he had good intentions, but now he just completely turned her off to it. She was open to it. Now she's off of it. I'm sure it was a mistake. I'm sure if he could look inside himself, maybe he feels bad about it. Maybe he doesn't even realize what he's done. So he doesn't even know better than to feel bad about it. I've done a lot of that in my life as well. There were a lot of times when I was very comfortable calling myself a Christian man. And I felt like it really fit me. You know, I was living my life by the teachings of Christ and everywhere in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But as you get older and wiser and as things start to fall apart in your life and you find out the reason why those things were falling apart in your life, you see that maybe you were selfish. Maybe you were self-centered. Maybe you weren't necessarily as high up and as high and mighty as you thought you were. And the Bible says, always be humble, be meek. To this day, I look at myself and I'm afraid to say I'm a good Christian. I don't know if I'm going to heaven or hell or not. I feel like I'm saved by the grace of God. But I may look back 10 years from now and be like, oh my God, what did I do? You know, I ruined this person's life or I was ruining that person's life and I didn't even know I was doing it. But the best thing you can do is try. Paul Washer, who is an excellent minister, very, very convicting, once told a story, and I'm going to paraphrase his story because it was very convicting to me. He said that an atheist was getting ready for work and his wife came down in a bathrobe yelling, did you take out the trash? And he was running late. His briefcase busted open one time and he had to pick up all the papers and he was running late for this really important meeting. And he looked at her, gave her this evil look and said, woman, can't you see I'm running late for work? You go take out that trash. And he left, and he went to work, and he felt justified. Six months later, he got saved. The same exact scenario popped up. He was running late for work. His briefcase had popped open, or it's, it's more of a parable. But he was running late for work. His papers were all over the floor. He was picking them up. His wife runs down the stairs in her robe and fuzzy slippers and says, Take the trash out. He looks at her. He says, Woman, can't you see I'm running late? You take that trash out. And he goes out to his car. And it feels like he's been stabbed in the heart with a knife. That is conviction. Does this 100% necessarily mean that you're saved? I don't think so. But I think it's a wonderful sign. I think it's definitely showing progress. I'm sure everyone listening to this has had a moment like that. I hope you have. And if you have, and you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you're, you're on pace to being saved, to being born again. I just, I want to get a positive message out here. I love debating. I love debating people on Christianity versus evolution or Christian versus, versus atheist or this or that. But you know what? I have not won a single soul to the Lord through my debating. I've impressed a few people who have been believers already and they liked what I had to say, and they thought, you know, I was wise and everything to be able to say this or that while I was taking on the atheist. And I consider that fun. But you know what? If I'm hurting that person in any way, even if he's not a fellow Christian, 
he was still created by God. He could still be, he or she could still be led to Christ. I don't want to be a stumbling block. I would rather help people up and lead them to the Lord. Not kick them while they're down and not seeking the Lord. I was right in the middle of making a video. I wanted to tackle the transgender using the bathroom uh, law that Obama just passed and said he was going to take away the school funding um, for the public schools that did not adhere to that law. I still have some issues with it, but it was so negative. It, it felt like I was doing exactly what convicted me to make this recording. So I scrapped it. I spent a couple hours on it. And uh, you know what? If there is a gay pastor out there, or a uh, gay married couple that consider themselves Christians, they are not following what's in the Bible. They are still living in sin. But guess what? So am I. So are you. If you say that you live without sin, the truth is not in you. And is one sin greater than another in the eyes of God? We truly are saved by grace. I do not want to attack homosexuals. I do not want to attack people who steal, people who want to use a different bathroom. I have my own reasons for not liking it. My own reasons would be something along the line of, I don't like the fact that people could pose as transgenders and go into the bathroom and really they're just perverts and now they have the ability to do so. That's my biggest grievance with the law. But I, I really don't want to get into that right now because I don't want to be confrontational. And I hope that I don't make videos in the future that are so confrontational. I did a really horrible job on my last video, the chicken and the dinosaur thing. I'm so much better than that. The problem is, I do much better when I'm engaging with people with one-on-one -on -one conversation, going back and forth in a respectful debate. As soon as I get into just talking to you guys, which in essence is plugging in my headset to my iPhone and just sitting here talking to no one, I'm not very good at that yet. I edit it out. You know, I put it together for you guys. I get maybe 40, 50 views, and I'm happy with that because it's good to reach out to that many people. I mean, the average church size around here would probably be about 40 or 50 people. And I am in no way qualified to say that I am a minister of any sort. I am just a follower of Christ, and I'm doing my best, but I stumble daily. Some of my sins are worse than others. Some of the skeletons in my closet would shock some people. And I am not proud, but sometimes the soul is strong, but the flesh is weak. And I'm trying each day. You know, there's, there's so many times in my life that I can commit certain sins. And I know that it's a sin before I do it. And I do it anyway. So maybe I'm not really saved. But I feel like I'm saved. Because when I cry out to God, I feel he hears me. Now I cry out to him many times and ask him to fi fix a situation for me, and certain situations haven't been fixed. But that doesn't mean that he's not answering me. That does not mean that I don't look back a year from now and see how my life improved over those 12 months, or maybe even five years from now. Or going back in the past, if I said a prayer two years ago, and I look back and I'm like, wow, God answered my prayer. I wasn't strong enough to do this. I wasn't strong enough to stop doing that. But looking back, I have overcome these things. So 
If I'm not saved, I at least know that God loves me and cares enough about me to help me out when I'm stumbling. And I also wanted to make this video to prevent myself from making future videos where I lash out at other groups, whether it be atheists, whether it be evolution, whatever it may be, I don't want to lash out. God is love. That's what we need to be. And I know I mentioned gay earlier. Gay, you know, the transgender thing, everything that's been going on, gay marriage, you know, I mean, that's like the biggest political hot spot trending topic, whatever it is right now that's on everyone's mind across America, whether you're for it or whether you're against it. But that's not the only issue. There's issues all over the board. So many of these issues we've become numb to, to where we just live in sin, as I said earlier, and we didn't even realize we were living in sin at that time. Examine yourself. Are you producing good fruit? Do you call on the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord? If you do these things, I don't care if you follow Joel Olstein, who refuses to preach about hell. You're on the right track. Now, did I just attack Joel Olstein? No, I don't feel like I did. But there's so many people in the faith that think people like jo Joel Olstein are evil. Is he? I never met the guy in person, but and I've never watched one of his sermons. I'm not interested in that. So I'm kind of making, you know, this with, um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this secondhand because I never watched a sermon of his. But if he truly won't admit that there is a hell on CNN to Larry King or whatever it is, that might be someone that you might have to watch out for. But at the same time, if he is leading the people to the Lord and he is only step one, well then I, I don't know how big of a problem I would have with that. I don't know. I don't know everything the man said. I can't judge him. I don't, I, maybe I could judge him if I did my homework on him, but I'm not going to do my homework on him. I honestly don't care. If people are going to his church and giving to charities and, you know, he's preaching good things and he's bearing good fruit, then I got to say, as much as it may anger some of my friends, he may be a good guy. I don't know his reasoning for leaving out hell if indeed he does do that. I could be wrong. I could have a Joel Osteen fan listening to this and tell me, hey, go on YouTube and Type in this address and you'll see that you got the wrong picture about this guy. That's fine. I'm not 100% sure, but I think he's producing good fruit. Could he produce better fruit? Is he in it for the money? I don't know. One time, I was going through the drive through at Taco Bell. And there was this man who had his car parked in the back of the parking lot. And he had his door open. And he walked right up to my car. And he asked me if I could spare some change. He told me that he came to visit his girlfriend. And he had a small child with him. The door being open, I saw the car seat. And he did not have enough gas to get back to where he needed to go. I took my change tray. And I emptied out in his hand. There might have been ten bucks in there. Plenty of money to get where he was going. I live in a suburb of Cleveland. He was going to Cleveland. Cleveland's five minutes from here. So I go through Taco Bell. I'm feeling good about myself. You know, I, I just did a good thing. I'm not, you know, sitting there gloating over it or whatever. But, you know, it feels good to do the right thing. As I pull out, I see the same exact guy doing the same exact thing over there at the Sunoco station. I was furious at the time. I was just played. But you know what? You can't look at it that way. You have to feed the poor. You have to give clothing to the naked. You have to do these things. If they are, do, are committing a sin, 
and you fall for their trick and give them money when they don't need money or if they want to use that money for something else, that's between them and the Lord, not between you and the Lord. What's between you and the Lord is God put someone in front of you and you had the ability to either help them or turn them away. What did you do? Now, I'm not saying to go out and get suckered again and again and again to put yourself in the same position over and over, but I don't know what that guy really needed. Maybe he didn't live in Cleveland. Maybe he stole money from someone and they were threatening him if he didn't pay it back and he couldn't think of another way to get it back. I don't know. But if you come over and you knock on someone's car door window and say, hey, man, I owe people money. Can you spare some change? Do you think you're going to get as good as a result? I don't know. I can't judge this guy. That's why I say it's between him and God. I have nothing to do with it. Could he have just wanted to buy a bottle of booze? Absolutely. But again, that really doesn't concern me. I was presented with a man who said, I am out of gas. I have a small child with me. I have a need. Can you help me fill this need? So as far as I'm concerned, where I was inserted in his problem, I did the right thing, and whether or not he did the right thing on his end is up to him. Worry about yourself. Don't worry about the other people. Don't ever stop loving your neighbor. You may have been messed over by so many people, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your spouse, your children. You may feel it's not worth trusting anyone out there in the world. You may feel alone, like, oh, I was gullible. You know, I'm, I'm not going to let this happen to me again. You know what? You're not going to find happiness that way. You find happiness by doing the good. Don't expect anything back in return. I am immensely blessed. I feel like I'm saved. Sometimes I don't. But sometimes I do. And I know that if I am not yet saved, God's working on me. Which means he wants me. And God knows I want him. I do not want eternal separation from God. I can't deal with separation from God right now on earth. I... You just have this feeling like he's with me. He doesn't talk to me out loud. Sometimes I have trouble, you know, I'll, I'll be saying a prayer, asking him for something, and I kind of feel like I, I hear a voice in my head. Not, not like an audible voice, but kind of like when you talk to yourself. And then I, I don't know, is that me? Is that my mind kind of answering myself, or is that God answering me? It ain't about that. Test the Spirit and see if it brings forth good fruit or not. And looking back, just about anything I prayed for that I truly needed, God has provided for me. And this is why, this is why I am who I am. This is why I love the Lord. And I do not deserve to go to heaven. I do not deserve for the creator of the universe to even acknowledge my existence and the fact that he does is overwhelmingly amazing. I know positive messages don't get as many views. People lose interest in positive, men, uh, positive messages. But you know what? That's fine. I'd be much happier with 50 people listening to my recording than I would 500 people listening to me alienate another group of people of whom they also disagree with. Remember those two commandments that were the most important when Jesus was only asked which one is the most important. He couldn't answer with just one. The second one was far too important for him not to mention. And if you really think about it, those two commandments cover all eight of the rest of them. They really do. They would apply to every last one of them. So, I just, I want to wrap it up. 
I want you to stay blessed. I hope my message has stirred something inside of you to go out and do something positive. Go out and buy a coat, buy an extra coat for someone if you have the extra money at the Salvation Army or whatever. Now, well, it's summertime. Okay, go out and do something that bears good fruit. If you're bearing bad fruit and you see that in your life, it's time to be born again. It's time to let the old you die and the new you spring up and grow into a huge oak tree. I know oak trees don't bear fruit. They bear leaves, but you get what I'm saying. Bear good fruit for your friends, for your enemies, for the people you don't even know. God bless you.